Thank you so much for coming back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about when a stranger calls. David from Interpreting the Stars is back once again to do another collab here on my channel. We're going to hear from him in just a little bit but a big thanks to him for being in this video. Always a pleasure to have you my friend. So When a Stranger Calls 2006. This is a remake of the classic film and I remember I actually saw this movie first. I had never even heard of the original and then I saw this movie in theaters. I was about 13 years old when this movie came out. 12 or 13 if I can't remember exactly. It was one of the earlier horror films that I ever saw in theaters and primarily because it was PG-13. Already at this point, my parents, specifically my mom, I should say, not even my parents, my mom, was cool with me watching, you know, a lot of the slasher films or any of the horror or Halloween movies that were always playing on TV during the Halloween season. So I always saw the censored version that was on TV and I was always really into the stories, the imagery and the creepy movies. And so I was definitely really excited to be able to see one of these movies on the big screen because even as a kid, even though I wasn't as in love with film to the same level that I am now um, I definitely always had a love and an appreciation of being able to go see things in the theater so yeah I was incredibly excited to see this movie in theaters and what I could say is I remember my first time seeing this movie really really well and it was definitely a really positive experience I'll go ahead and say right now I thoroughly enjoy this film it's not my favorite and there's definitely things about it re-watching it today that I didn't love but for the most part I think it's a really solid suspense driven thriller that you know obviously has horror elements though it's not as scary for anybody who's a horror veteran like myself at this point but watching it the first time was really really great because it is a very tense film I think if you've never seen this movie before even if you've seen movies like this there is a lot of tension I think the film does a great job of building up suspense and our main character played by Camilla Bell I think she does a really really great job as, at building that suspense and really letting all of those really heavy moments just kind of lie on her shoulders and you as the audience member are on this ride with her watching it the first time in theaters it was you know tense it was this dark theater I was definitely creeped out by everything that was happening the suspense definitely had me on the edge of my seat and I specifically remember that there was a black couple sitting a couple rows in front of us and it wasn't really a packed theater but they were there making comments every here and there at those perfect moments that just made for a really great uh, kind of release and kind of like a, a, a little bit of levity in the mix of everything happening because in the moment I was definitely really tense and holding on to my seat and I was cre creeped out at what was happening and then you have this black couple up in the front that was just making the perfect comments to just kind of bring a a little bit of you know lightness a little bit of laughter in these moments that were really really tense so I really enjoyed my memory of seeing this movie the first time in theaters and you know re-watching it since I always really thoroughly enjoyed it now let me go back to Camila Bell she's the main character and actress in this film and yeah I always remembered her specifically from the opening of Jurassic Park the Lost World the first sequel to Jurassic Park I always just remember her being the little girl who gets eaten by the compies at the beginning of that movie but uh, yeah you know I think she does a really great job job in this movie you know there's an element of this film on an overall level as far as the performances that definitely have that you know 2000s cheesy kind of teen vibe and you know it's just gonna happen with a movie like this it's a pg-13 horror film centered around teenage characters specifically one teenage character and if you guys have no idea what this movie is all about the basic premise of this movie is that you have camila bell's character who has now been grounded by her parents because she went over on her minutes on their family's phone plan which right out of the gate made me laugh re-watching it because i completely forgot that that was the reason that this whole story ends up happening because she gets grounded she ends up needing to kind of make up for the extra minutes that she spent so she needs to pick up a job ends up getting a babysitting job out in the middle of nowhere and her parents end up driving her out there her dad drives her out there her dad is played by Clark Gregg which is another great little thing there's a few people in this movie who in this film are kind of just whatever they're there for short periods of time they're just kind of there to get from point A to point B or be that friend or that person or in this case for Clark Gregg the dad and there's a few actors that would go on to become big things in comic book related properties you have Clark Gregg who obviously would go on to be Agent Coulson in the Avengers movies as well as Tessa Thompson who would obviously go on to be in the Thor movies and you have Katie Cassidy who would go on to be in the Arrowverse on the CW so I always thought that was cool rewatching this now it definitely stood out to me a lot more seeing these actors who would go on to be a lot bigger than the main star of this film but yeah Camila Bell I think she does a really great job of driving this movie and being this character in this this really shitty situation. I just realized I'm rambling and I haven't really gotten to what the meat and potato 
details of this movie is about. So let's do that. Yeah, not too long into the movie, she ends up going to, you know, do this babysitting job. And while she's there, she ends up getting these very anonymous, very creepy phone calls. Sometimes they just call and they're just breathing. And eventually they call and ask if she's checked the children. And yeah, the whole movie is her alone in this house while she's getting these creepy phone calls from somebody. And the person essentially knows what she's doing. And you later find out in the end of the film or later in the film that the guys have been inside the house the entire time. So this is a film of suspense. It's creepy. It's eerie. It's not necessarily scary. Like I'm not necessarily scared watching it today. And I don't think this is a movie I can go and say, oh, if you've never seen it before and you're a horror fanatic, you should definitely go watch it because you'll be scared because that's not the case. But I think the film is incredibly well acted. It's entertaining. It's well paced. And it's also got a slower pace to it while also keeping you engaged and entertained. It's a film that constantly has something happening, even though you could think that this film could just get boring by it just being about a girl walking around a house on her own getting phone calls and eventually dealing with this person that's in the house. I think they do a good job of keeping it entertaining and engaging as well as really suspenseful. And I think that if somebody's watching this movie for the very first time, there's definitely a good reaction that can come out of that person. Having this been like maybe the fifth or sixth time that I've seen it, you know, I definitely knew where everything was going to happen. I knew what was going to happen and when it was going to happen. So it wasn't very scary for me. But watching with my girlfriend, she wasn't necessarily scared either. But I know she was definitely engaged and interested and entertained. And I think even if a horror film or a thriller film isn't necessarily scary to modern audiences as long as it can retain that engagement and that entertainment value I think that it can still really be a solid movie and I think that this movie is exactly that now before I continue rambling let's go ahead and hear what David from interpreting the stars have to say about this hey what's up and welcome to interpreting the scares Today I'm back on Anthony's channel and he has asked me to provide my two cents on a little remake called When a Stranger Calls. <laughs> Let me take you on a little bit of a journey to the past, to the year 2006 specifically when this movie was first released. Now, back then I had Netflix and Netflix was not what it's known to be today. There was no Netflix originals or streaming movies, you simply had a queue of DVD rentals and every now and then they'd send you a physical disc or two for you to watch. Now, maybe you watched it right away, or maybe you were like me and you let it sit around for weeks at a time because there was no late fee. Well, one evening, I couldn't sleep. It was past midnight and I figured I might as well watch that movie that I had sitting on my TV stand and it just so happened to be When a Stranger Calls. I popped this sucker in and I'll be honest, I got spooked. Now granted, I never really saw a true horror film until 2009, so when I first saw this, I had yet to experience real horror. All I knew was that this film kept me on the edge of my seat and it rattled me, so much so that the next morning I had to get my brother to watch it with me, except the next day, it wasn't as good or as heart throbbing or as scary or anything. That probably had to do with the fact that I was more alert, had already seen it at this point, and it was in the middle of the day, but I had hyped my brother up to seeing it. And throughout the film, he just kept on shooting me glances saying, this is what freaked you out? I mean, it's pretty basic. Good times. I'll admit that since that day, I've seen basically everything under the sun, so the effectiveness of this movie isn't as strong as it once was, but maybe it still can be for those still blind to either this movie or its original version for which it's based. Now, I'm not sure, but collog amongst yourselves while I get through this review, and let's get cracking. This review is brought to you by the word of the day, collog, to talk privately, aka confer. When a stranger calls, takes 16 year old Jill Johnson to a massive, beautiful home to babysit a couple of kids. She needs to do this because she's grounded for going over her minutes on her family's cell phone plan. While babysitting, strange things begin to happen and Jill starts getting crank calls in the middle of the night by a mouth breather that likes to taunt her. But with all the security measures set up by the owners of the home, is this caller actually a threat? Throughout the night, Jill realizes more and more how dire her situation really is. I'll start with the good, that is, what is it that spooked me all those years ago? Truth be told, I think it was the suspense. This is one of the better suspense films that I've seen in recent years because it doesn't do what virtually every other horror and thriller film has done recently. It doesn't just throw a killer in this girl's face 20 minutes in. In fact, the stranger never even calls the girl until at least a half hour in, and you don't physically see him until much, much later. That allows for tensions and paranoia to naturally rise. When the caller first asked the famous line, Have you checked the children? 
and Jill goes up to do just that as an audience member, I remember kind of looking away a little bit when she crept up the stairs and peeked into the room because I fully expected him to be standing there with a knife or something in the kid's room. But what you come to expect out of this movie isn't immediately what you find. It's both stereotypical and somewhat fresh at the same time. I loved the pacing of this film, which just gets more and more tense as the movie progresses. Every motion that happens, whether it's a movement from Camilla Bell or it's the camera motion itself, it's all something that creeps really, really slowly. All of it takes its time, and it never rushes doing something before it's ready to do it. The lighting of certain scenes was really good, as the moonlight shines through the blinds and the windows and lights up only parts of Jill's face. The camera lens also seems to be a bit wide-angled, so that the looming size of the house alone creates an isolating atmosphere. Past that, you have to admit that 99% of the film is just Camilla Bell reacting to things. There's almost no other actors in the entire film. I mean, there is here and there, but it mostly falls on her shoulders and her shoulders alone to act happy, annoyed, scared, mad, etc. She has a lot to prove in this movie, and she mostly pulls it all off magnificently. That, combined with the technical positives the film already had, made the film work out really well. As for the negatives in the film, obviously it's a story that's been told before. Not only in its own original film, but it's been mimicked in the Scream franchise. I mean, the entire movie as a whole is basically the opening sequence of Scream 1 with Drew Barrymore. Instead of the caller asking her what her favorite scary movie is, he's asking if she checked the children. And throughout the movie, he stalks her, he calls her, she runs around like a chicken with her head cut off, just like Drew Barrymore. It's also a product of its time, right? The entire foundation of why she's there in the first place is because she went over on her cell phone minutes, something people in the modern day and age cannot really relate to. She's 16 in this movie. You think 16 year olds in the year 2020 even know what limited minutes are on a cell phone plan? But when all is said and done, these negatives are easily glossed over because the thrills and the suspense are better than most thriller films that come out these days. It takes its sweet time to progress naturally. I feel like if we were in this situation as well, things wouldn't happen right away. Not in real life. It would probably take a while to get there like seen in the movie. Let's go ahead and break down the final score for a second. From an unbiased technical level, this film excels in its sense of suspense, and Camilla Bell does a really good job balancing the film on her shoulders. But its unoriginality ultimately hurt the film overall. That score is 75%. But my bias score is quite a bit higher, 86%, because it's an overlooked film in the world of suspense. It holds its own weight. When averaged together, the final score comes down to 80%, 80 out of 100 possible stars, or a B minus letter grade. I didn't think I'd watch over the 31 already planned horror films for October this year on my channel, but I'm glad that you reached out Anthony. This movie has been on my to watch again list for a really long time and this year was the perfect time to revisit it. Make sure that everybody hits the like button on this video because Anthony worked super hard on it and a thumbs up goes a long way and do not forget to hit that subscribe button and bell. Anthony and I have a plan to do a collab on a, my channel soon so I'm looking forward to that but until then Peace out. A big thanks to David for being in another video here. I definitely appreciate hearing your thoughts, man. And it sounds like we're pretty much on the same level, right? The first time we saw it, it was definitely very creepy and eerie and almost really the kind of movie you want to go tell your friends to go check out. And then after you've seen it and, you know, maybe you watch it in the daylight or you kind of just watch it on a chill day at home, you realize it's not that scary, but it's still an entertaining movie. I think Camila Bell does a great job of carrying the load of this film on her shoulders. And this film definitely could have either been really really good or really bad because the director is Simon West who I enjoy some of his films and I don't enjoy some of the other films that he's done but he's directed films like the Tomb Raider film the first one with um, Angelina Jolie playing Laura Croft he's also directed films like Expendables 2 which is my favorite of the Expendables films and he's also directed Con Air so you know he's got some great films in his filmography and some not so great so this film could have definitely been somewhere in the middle and I would say that this movie is definitely one of his underrated films a film that I feel people don't really think about when they talk about the horror or specifically when a stranger calls i personally found this film to be more entertaining than the original when i watched the original and what i liked about this film is this film you know even though it's a remake of the original it kind of just takes a portion of that original film and focuses out and stretches it out into a movie whereas in the original film you know they kind of have a lot more going on there's multiple days if i'm not mistaken i haven't seen it in a long time but if i'm not mistaken that's what happens and in this one 
the whole movie takes place in one night. So it is one of those movies that's, you know, very eerie, very creepy, very in the moment. And I definitely really enjoyed that. There are some performances and some elements that definitely date this film. There's definitely that cheesy 2000s teen vibe that I think even teenagers today would just laugh at, kind of seeing some of the dialogue and some of the attire that these people were wearing. And then, of course, the whole element about, you know, her going over her family's uh, phone plan minutes is definitely laughable. It's a very cheesy, dated element that definitely ages the film but i think the film on its own is entertaining i think the idea of this girl being in this house and the way that they execute a film that in a lot of ways could just be boring because it's just about a girl stuck in this house getting these creepy phone calls the way that they kind of implement a very subtle score the way she's walking around her performance and this big house that she's in I think they did a really good job of keeping this movie very suspenseful and eerie while you're watching it. And let's get to the house really quickly because I don't really have too much more to say. But the house that she's in, which makes it all worse, again, like I mentioned, it's out in like bumfuck nowhere. Like literally, why did she even get this job and why was her parents okay with her getting this job that they had to drive her out to, this babysitting job that was like out in the middle of nowhere. Like it's literally one of those houses that's literally in the middle of nowhere, where it's just a singular house, separate from everybody else. It of course makes it convenient for her to be stuck in this situation and that there's no neighbors. But yeah, I remember watching this movie and even watching it now, like the house, who would even want to live there? It's this huge house with all these windows and they have it decorated with these creepy statues and there's a bajillion rooms and there's a maid. And that's another thing, there's a maid in this house. There's a maid who's there that she sees a couple of times and then the maid ends up disappearing and then the maid dies and I always thought to myself and especially now re-watching it I was just like why did they ever ask for a babysitter if they already had a live-in maid like there are elements about this film that could have completely made the plot of this film irrelevant and uh, that definitely was the biggest standout to me is the fact that they have a live-in maid this family that is you know hiring a babysitter but they don't trust the living maid to watch the kids while they go out to like an event. Very strange to me. But yeah, guys, that's going to be my thoughts on When a Stranger Calls 2006. I think this is an overlooked horror thriller that isn't necessarily scary today. But I can see people watching this for the first time who aren't big on horror and thriller watching this and kind of being a little creeped out. It is an eerie and creepy film that builds suspense. It keeps you engaged. It keeps you entertained. The main performance given, obviously, by Camila Bell, and it really all relies on her to make this film work, is really good. I think she does a great job. I think she's an actress that I'm surprised that I haven't seen in much more as the years have gone on and which is a big surprise to me but yeah you know going back and revisiting this movie it wasn't as scary as I remember but it was entertaining I had a good time with it and I think if you're looking for something to watch definitely check it out I don't really know all of the streaming services or anything that you can find it on I personally watched it on Hulu I also don't know if it's on Hulu with one of the like stars expansions or anything like that so you know, I'm obviously not giving the best recommendation on where you can find it, but I do recommend checking it out. But I know it's on Hulu, so at least check Hulu. If you have Hulu, it's on there. Go back and revisit it. Or if you haven't seen it, check it out for the first time because I think it's a really tense and suspenseful film that I think a lot of people would really enjoy watching today, even though you can laugh at some of the dated elements like going over your minutes. So yeah, a big thanks to David once again for being here in this video. Super grateful, man. Loved hearing your thoughts. I'm glad that we pretty much had a similar view on this. Always really happy to have you in a video, and I'm definitely looking forward to the collab that you're going to have me on in your channel so i'm definitely excited you guys as usual can find the link to his channel down below in the description box go give him some love like i mentioned just now and like he mentioned i'll be on his channel very soon so definitely go over there subscribe and you guys will see our collab soon hit that like button down below if you guys enjoyed this video comment your thoughts do you like this movie do you not like this movie have you even seen this movie definitely can't wait to hear what you guys have to say also hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it if you guys are looking to be notified for my future videos i know sometimes youtube does not notify people so i would really really appreciate that and yeah guys i'll catch you in the next one thank you guys again Bye bye